Hi, and welcome to lecture 19 of Math 1B03. In today's lecture, we're going to be looking at section 4.1 of the textbook, if you're following along. Uh, if you're not, we're, what we're doing is we're looking at vector spaces and subspaces. So up until this point, we've learned a lot about uh, matrices and solving systems of linear equations. Today, what we're going to do is start as something different. We'll be looking at kind of things more abstractly. So kind of the goal of today's lecture is to introduce vector spaces. And what you want to keep in the back of your mind while we're doing this is what we're trying to do is abstract the properties of Rn. So we're looking for a bigger theory in which Rn, the set of vectors, n tuples, becomes a special case of a much more general theory. And that's what a vector space is. It's this idea of abstracting the properties of Rn to apply to many different cases. So today's lecture gets a little bit more theoretical. I'll try to go through it as slowly as I can. We're going to start off by defining what a vector space is, and then most of the lecture will be talking about examples, and then we'll also be talking about subspaces, and then examples of subspaces as well. Okay, so hopefully my face has gone away. Just let me double check. Yep, okay, everything's good to go. Uh, so first, let me do the definition of a vector space. Now, this is probably one of the longest definitions you'll see in linear algebra. It fills up my screen here on the left-hand side. And let me just walk you through it. So what is a vector space? So a vector space is a non-empty, uh, non-empty, I don't know why it says subset. I should say a non-empty set v of objects and the objects inside of v are called vectors on which are defined two operations so there, there's going to be a way that you can add things in your set together to get another thing in your set and you should be able to take something in your set and multiply it by a scalar and get back inside of the set subject to the following axiom so these are conditions that have to be true about your addition and multiplication so I haven't written them all out. I'm going to be filling out some of the details here. So the first statement says that for all pairs U and V, when you add them together using your operation, you get another object inside of your set. The second condition tells me the order in which I add my vectors does not matter. So U plus V is equal to V plus U. The third condition is an associative property. So it's telling you if you have three things, the order in which you add them doesn't matter in the following sense, that this is the same thing as first adding V and W together and then adding it to U. Inside of your set, V also has to be a special uh, vector called a zero vector with the property that no matter what vector you add it to, you get back that vector back when you add it to zero. The vector space also has the property that whenever you're given a vector, there's another vector in your vector space called the negative of it, such that when you add those two vectors, you can get to the zero vector. Okay, so statements two through five are telling us a little bit about how the addition operation works in your vector space. And then the rest of the conditions tell us a little bit about scalar multiplication and then how it behaves with respect to the addition property. So the sixth property tells me that for any vector that I start with and any constant or scalar in the real numbers, C times U is also inside of V. Seven tells me how scalar multiplication behaves with the vector addition. So this is the same thing as first scaling the vectors and then adding them together. This condition here is telling me about whether I first add the numbers and then scalar multiply, or I could first multiply the vectors by the corresponding scalars and add them together. This one is telling me how multiplication of scalars behaves. And then the last condition tells me if I take any vector and I multiply it by one, I should get back the vector that I start with. So there's a lot of things here to kind of memorize. And no, don't worry, on a test or exam, you wouldn't have to like memorize each of these statements. We would give it if you needed it. But what you need to know is that a vector space satisfies a whole bunch of conditions. Okay. And before we go get into examples, just let me kind of help you decide whether a set is a vector space or not. Okay. So say you're given a set and you want to check if it's a vector space. First of all, you should 
be comfortable, what are the objects in my set? What are, identify the set of vectors. Once you're comfortable with that, you should be able to then try to identify the, uh, uh, the operation, the uh, identify, excuse me, identify addition and scalar multiplication operations in V. So what are the operations in the vector space, that, the proposed vector space? Then what you want to do is you want to show that one and six are true. Okay, so this is called checking the closure of the operation. The closure of the operation. Because what one and six are saying, and I'll just move back to that over here. So one is right here and six is right here. And the first statement is saying that your operation has the property that if you take two vectors and apply the operation, you get back in the set. Similarly, if you take a vector u and you take a constant c and you do the scalar multiplication, you get something back in your set. So you want to first make sure that that's true. And once you have that true, then what you want to do is check the rest of your axioms. make sure that all of those statements are true. Okay, so the, the main example of a vector space in this course is actually one that you've seen before. We haven't used the language of vector spaces, but uh, it is, and the example that I'm thinking of is Rn. Okay, and let me just kind of run through these conditions here, one through four applied to the set Rn. So what is the set of vectors? Well, it's all the elements, and we actually have been calling them vectors, all these column vectors, u1 through un. So that's my set of vectors. Next, you want to be careful, make sure you understand what are the operations. And in this case, addition is just regular vector addition. So I'll just repeat it right here. So how do you add your elements together? So u1 through un plus the vector v1 through vn gets sent to the new vector u1 plus v1 up to un plus vn, right? So we're just doing uh, component-wise addition. And we have our scalar multiplication is going to be the same as what we had before, u1 up to un. We scale our vector by multiplying every entry by the constant c. So those are my my two operations on my set. So this is my set, these are my elements, this is how I'm combining them. Three and, and then we have to show that one and six are true, but that's clear, all right? So operations satisfy one and six since the new vectors still in the set Rn. We're just making new vectors in my set Rn. And then the one that looks like it's going to be a lot of work, actually we've already done. Okay, uh, Rn satisfies the rest of the axioms. And I probably actually wrote all of those back when we were looking at chapter one, in particular, if you look at section 1.3. If you go look at section 1.3, you will see a statement about Rn and it's saying that the vectors satisfy all of these properties. So your standard example of a vector space is Rn. And we'll take a little break here. And after the break, I'm going to give you kind of some other examples of vector spaces.